Okay, let's do this. Here's an example for homework 8. This is a very similar problem than what we did in class. So we have a mass spring damper system with a differential equation. It's up here. Uh, it's a forced system. Now the actual forcing function is a summation of two sinusoidal terms. So right off the bat, let's just go ahead and think of these guys as um, F1 and F2. So we have these two forcing functions. And we want to see how they affect the system. So we need to find the response. Actually, I should have written this. So find response x as a function of time. Okay, so we'll basically find a one response due to each force. So we'll have a uh, x due to f1, x due to f2, and then we'll add them together using superposition. Okay, let's get to it. The first thing we're going to need is find the transfer function. Transfer function in this case, it's really easy. It's the output x over the input f. And you should be able to just look at it and tell that it's going to be 1 divided by 3 s squared plus 6 s plus 1200. Okay, this is my transfer function. The next thing we need to do is find the frequency transfer function because these are all sinusoidal forcing terms. So the frequency transfer function is the transfer function evaluated at i omega. Um, so you basically just substitute s for i omega. So it will be 3 i omega squared plus 6 i omega plus 1200. Remember, i is your imaginary number, square root of negative 1. So when you square the first term, you get a negative in there. So whatever, you do all this, you rearrange it. And here's what you get. 1 over, uh, this is after a couple of steps, 1200 minus 3 omega squared plus 6 omega uh, and I purposely put the imaginary stuff on one side and the real on the other. So obviously, the denominator, this is your real part, and this is your imaginary part. So it's a vector. So to find the magnitude ratio, which is the next step, the magnitude ratio is a function of frequency. You will simply take the amplitude of this frequency transfer function, and that will be the amplitude of the numerator, which is 1, and the amplitude of the denominator, which is the square root of the sum of the squares of the real part and the imaginary part. So 1,200 minus 3 omega squared, squared, that's your real part, plus 6 omega squared. You can already see how much fun this is going to be. So here's your magnitude ratio. And so now we're going to apply this magnitude ratio to each forcing input term so that we can figure out its effect on the output. So we'll isolate this into two parts. So the first thing is we're going to find x1, which is due to f1, right? Um, so in the first forcing term, if you scroll back up, oh, why don't we do that real quick? So the first forcing term has an amplitude of 80 over pi and a frequency of 2 pi, whereas the second one has this amplitude and this frequency. So for the first forcing term, let's just make it a note that omega 1 is 2 pi radians per second. And the magnitude of that force is um, 80 over pi, right? Okay, so... To find that magnitude ratio, we're basically going to evaluate. We're going to, here's our magnitude ratio for any given frequency. So in this particular case, our frequency is 2 pi radians per second. So we'll just plug in 2 pi for omega and figure out what that magnitude ratio is. So let's call this m1 because it's the magnitude ratio due to omega 1. So M1 to omega, it's basically the magnitude ratio evaluated at 
two pi radians per second. So if you actually plug all that stuff in, I'll spare you of the details, but you will get this number, 0 0.000924. Once again, that would be this equation right here, evaluated with omega being 2 pi. And then once you have the magnitude ratio, you can now find the amplitude of that response due to that first force. So it will be the forcing input magnitude times the magnitude ratio. And uh, so what is it? 80 over pi is the amplitude of that force times that magnitude ratio, which we just found, 9 to 4. And you end up with x1 being 0. 235, I guess might as well assume meters. And then to find the angle, you know, um, maybe I didn't stress this in class too much. I kind of said the quadrant wasn't important, but I believe it actually is. Uh, so let's just go ahead and check for the quadrant. So check quadrant. And remember for the quadrant, we're going to, um, actually, you know, I forget to write something. Let's go a little bit further up. So I found the magnitude ratio as a function of omega. Uh, we're going to do the same thing for the angle. So in general terms, the angle as a function of omega, uh, looking at the frequency transfer function, it will be the angle of the numerator minus the angle of the denominator. And so the angle of the numerator is just 0 because it's the inverse tangent of 0 over 1. And the angle of the denominator will be well, minus inverse tan of, it's always imaginary over real, so 6 omega divided by 1200 minus 3 omega squared. And the quadrant criterion is um, Q3 if basically m omega squared is greater than k, and it would be Q4 else, right? So if k is actually greater than the moment of the squared. Okay, so back to where we are. Uh, we'll check the quadrant here. And so we need to find what m omega squared is. So, so basically m omega squared would be the mass is 3, omega is 2 pi squared. That's 118. Compare it to the spring constant, which is 1200. Not even close. So we are definitely in quadrant four, and that's good because quadrant four is the, one of the easier ones to solve for. Um, so basically, phi one will be the minus inverse tan um, of zero point um, zero three five. Uh, by the way, this zero point zero three five is what you get if you plug in two pi in here. And um, if you actually plug this into your calculator, you already get a quadrant 4 angle, so you don't have to do anything else. So phi 1 is equal to negative 0 0.035 radians. Okay, Q4, check. Next up, we'll do X2, which is due to F2. Due to F2. In this case, our omega 2, omega two is uh, six pi yeah six pi radians per second our second forcing amplitude is where is it 80 over three pi okay presumably newtons all right let's go fast here oh sorry okay so the second magnitude ratio so m2 omega is the magnitude ratio evaluated at 6 pi. Plug in the magnitude ratio of that um, um, value and you will get 0 0.0057. So that means that our amplitude for the second uh, response term will be that second force times that second uh, magnitude ratio, which you know, is 80 over 3 pi multiplied by the magnitude ratio that we just found and you get x2 be equal to 0 0.0484 Oop, all right got it all right quickly angle 
V2. Uh, let's find, let's do a quadrant check. So M omega squared in this case would be 3 times 6 pi squared. That is 1,066, which is coming close to 1,200, but not quite. So we are still in Q4. Good stuff. So that means that phi 2 minus tangent minus 1. Again, if I uh, go back to my um, phi equation that I figured out earlier and I plug in 6 omega, I'm sorry, 6 pi for omega, um, what goes in, what I get in here is 0 0.843. And therefore, my second angle ends up being negative 0 0.7 radians, which is already in the fourth quadrant, so you don't have to do anything. If, if what you, if you found a third angle quadrant uh, based on the criterion, and you did this, uh, and you don't get a third quadrant angle, then that means you have to do the whole first, the first quadrant equivalent and all that. But if the calculator already gives you the quadrant that you're looking for, then that's good. You can just keep moving. All right, so I believe we're done. So, um, so basically, um, I can just write my answer, and I could have written my individual sub answers. I mean, basically, from if I go up a little bit, my sub answer up here in the first uh, in the first case would be x1 is the amplitude that I just found times sine of omega t plus the angle. X2 is my second amplitude times sine of omega t uh, plus the angle. So Knowing that, I will know my final solution. I should have written those down. I just forgot. Final solution. X is a function of time. This is the steady state response, by the way. So X1, which is 0 0.235 times the sine of the first frequency, 2 pi t plus the angle minus 0 0.035 plus the second guy, 0.0484 sine of 6 pi t minus 0.7. Done. Uh, I don't know, meters? Sure, let's do it. Okay, look at that. All right, messed up the box. I don't care. Let's get out of here.